United Church of Christ. We are so happy you've chosen to worship with us on this Sacrament Sunday. A couple of announcements that are in your bulletin. I want to point out to you some upcoming events. And then a past event yesterday morning at the Crack O'Don, 7 a.m., a bunch of willing workers uh, did yard work on the property uh, next door to us on Royalton Road. And the difference was amazing. And everybody pitched in, and it was just such a, a wonderful event, and a lot of work was accomplished. And, and some of the, uh, the workers cleaned the inside of, of the house and shampooed the carpet. And we had people cleaning the refrigerator in here. So there was plenty of work to go around. And so thank you to everyone who contributed to that effort. That was, that was wonderful. OK, so it's July, first day of July. And so much is happening in, in July. Uh, on the 15th of July, we're going to have a celebration for the beautiful and talented Sharon Heinrich to celebrate her retirement. If you have not filled out a little memory or a little uh, greeting paper, those are located in, in the gathering area next to where you pick up the bulletin. So you'd be kind enough to fill one of those out and turn that in. Um, you have a couple of weeks yet, but not that much time left. Um, we also have the Strongsville Homecoming Parade coming up. That will be on the 25th, that's a Wednesday, and they'll be decorating the float, and we'll get more information about that soon. But a couple of days prior to that, the church picnic. There is a sign-up for the church picnic, and that's located on the bulletin board in Pilgrim Hall. So please sign up for the church picnic to us. give us an idea what you're bringing, and that should be a wonderful time. That's at Volunteer Park. And Linda wants me to make sure that I confirm and tell you there are restrooms, there is electricity, it's not going to be roughing it. It's going to be a wonderful time. Games for the kids. It's going to be a wonderful time on the 22nd uh, of July. No AC? No AC. No AC. No AC, but the, the breath of the spirit will keep you cool. <laughs> um, and just a, a quick reminder, the 4th of July is coming up just in a few days. The free lunch program is taking a, a fireworks break, I suppose we'll call it. Uh, so no free lunch on Wednesday. So we will also Fit Club. I know you were planning to come, but they will not be meeting this Wednesday. So we'll see you in just a, a week from Wednesday then. Um, does anyone else have any announcements? Oh, Ken. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Bitty Band concert this uh, Friday. It is going to be at the Historical Village. And for some reason, the weather is bad or even too hot. Like we have to move our last one in this indoors. It'll be a <clears throat> Sorry, but it's going to be at the Methodist Church. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, so that's at 7.30, it's got American music, uh, you know, there Cole Porter, Sousa, George Gershwin. And those of you missed last Friday's concert, you really missed. We had so much fun. It was the most fun concert I've ever done in my life. We had Slider from the Cleveland Indians. He contributed. Michelle, you had your picture. Everybody was having a picture taken with Slider. He directed the Stars and Stripes forever. And um, I told you about it beforehand. Unfortunately, only a few of you came. So the rest of you really missed them. Funny. So it was the most fun concert you ever had until this Friday's concert. Yeah. <laughs> right? <Yeah>, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. And she mentioned that the uh, Strongsville Special Olympians uh, came, went to Columbus last week for states and came back with a lot of medals and ribbons. And I know Dale can't be involved in that effort, too. That's why he had to substitute reader last week. Does anyone else have any announcements to come before the congregation this morning? Seeing none, let's continue with our worship with the intro. One, two. Hello.
please rise and join me in the call to worship today. And I will say I'm having issues with my contact lens, so if I stumble on any of the words, I'm blaming it on that. <laughs> the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. We are new every morning. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in God. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that sees him. Our first hymn is hymn number 11. <clears throat> Depths, 
you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. The word of the psalmist. Thanks be to God. Okay. <laughs> We're flying this morning. Um, welcome. Many, many morning. It is so good to have you with us worshiping at Strongsville United Church of Christ. And I would just say that we are here every Sunday at 10 a.m. So we'll be here next week. Now in three weeks we'll be in the park. But you can come here too. I get to go first. I have a joy to share and a concern to share. We'll go with the good news first. Everett Ashforth entered the world about noon on Wednesday to Tiffany and Nicole, and he is doing well. He hit a bump in the road yesterday. Uh, he was, uh, his uh, temperature dropped a little bit, and he wasn't eating like he should. So he's back at Fairview and needs your continued prayers. But Tiffany and Nicole are both doing well, and Everett is back doing better again. The downside. Uh, the sad news I have to share. Many of you over the years have attended camp or our retreats at Temple Hills or Pilgrim Hills. We learned yesterday that Jeff Thompson passed away unexpectedly. He was the camp manager at Temple Hills and had been the camp manager at Pilgrim Hills. I have information about uh, his calling hours and service. I'm not going to read them because you won't hear them well. Um, but if you wish to have more information, let me know, and I will get that to you. We've had that shared straight from the conference. So please keep Jeff's widow, Carolyn, in your prayers, and all of the people on the staffs of the camp who have known Jeff over the years and worked with him. I understand he was an amazing, amazing person. So what do you bring this morning? What joys or concerns do you bring to the table? Um, um, I'd like to pray for my friend Leona, who was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. She's only got three to six months to live. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Uh, I have a joy. Anna turned seven on Thursday. All right. All right. <laughs> we have a, a birthday this morning, too. John Struhar. Right. He's, he's, he's 90 today. Thank the Lord. 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 For helping me count out pennies from Penny Sunday that came to 5,602 pennies. Oh, wow. I needed help carrying the box of pennies into the bank. I had to go in and get somebody to help me carry them in. <laughs> wow, see, a few pennies go a long ways, Judy. Uh, my granddaughter got married uh, last weekend. It was a wonderful family time. My son flew in from the Philippines. Beautiful wedding. And the twins were junior bridesmaids. Their brother walked them down the aisle. Excellent. Such fun. Upstairs, Clay. Um, oops, I just have no awkwardness. Um, friends from my family and my father's side of the friend, as 
this Thursday will mark a year since my brother passed away from my absence. So she, our families in the Ukraine, this really does go through this difficult week. First anniversaries of losing someone are often very, very difficult. So please keep playing his family in your prayers. <coughs> and I'd like a prayer for all those. It's on your own. I'd like a prayer for all those who can't get out of this heat that they find some place to go. And for all the bad things in the world, make it better. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Thank you for my prayer. Thank you for your prayers for my mom. Um, she had a procedure, she's doing very, very well, just not out in the heat. And we're still waiting for results, so continued prayers for that. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Oh, uh, Barbara Jolf, my wife, uh, is uh, home on Thursday after two months of her journey with open heart surgery. Two uh, months, wow. Yeah, she had some difficulties there. They repaired the micro valve, three <laughs> days later it failed. And uh, two weeks later, they had put an artificial valve in and like to make a congregation for our prayers and thoughts, particularly uh, Pastor Hyman, for, for holding my hand. That's what we do. We walk together through the valleys. I'm glad she's doing better. Thank, Thank you for sharing. Sarah. I just want to say a special thanks to our family and friends that are here today to help us celebrate um, here and in spirit. And then just a special thanks to Joyce who um, made Ella's outfit today. So. Oh, nice. Thank you. Others? Let's pray together. Lord God, we come before you celebrating new life and all the potential and hope that lies in the, in the unexpected cries of joy and in the whispers and Googles as things go forward. We are grateful for the presence of babies and children in this place and in our lives to remind us of your words inviting us to let the children come to you and that that includes not only the little children but us, your big children that we might come when things are hurting and know that you are hurting with us and come when things are challenging and know that you will put peace in our hearts that we might know your presence in our lives in all things. Lord, as we've come this morning to worship and celebrate the sacraments, we simply ask an extra dollop of your Holy Spirit in our lives that we might draw ever closer to you as we re-engage in those things that are familiar to us. In your name we pray. Amen.
my husband has a hat just like that, but Jack rocks it even better than Chuck does. <laughs> This morning we get to welcome Ella Rose officially to the family of God. Now, and I just like that when I do a baptism that you can all be right here to watch because most of you, if not all of you, probably don't remember when you were baptized because you were about that old and you don't remember much when you're a baby. Do any of you remember being baptized? Were you baptized older? Last year. Okay, so you can remember, but you can also watch and remember again. So that's the cool thing about this. So what I'm going to ask you to do is if you can, like, scoot yourselves back against that step so we have room for the family and room for the friends that are coming forward. And then we're going to invite Ella to bring her parents and whoever else is coming, and we'll do this. Oh, boy. Who have we got besides Ella and John? <laughs> John's cousin Sarah. John's cousin Sarah. My cousin Brown. And cousin Brenna, Sarah's cousin. Good to have you with us. The Gospels tell us stories of people bringing their littlest children to Jesus and how he welcomed them, bringing them into his lap, listening to them and loving them just as they were. But Jesus' disciples rebuked the parents, telling them Jesus hadn't the time to spend with little children. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and he reminded them, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God with the openness and innocence of a little child shall not enter it. And Jesus took the children into his arms and onto his lap and blessed them and laid his hands upon them. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. The promise of the gospel is not only to us, it is also to our children. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. So questions for the parents and for the sponsors. Do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Will you encourage her to renounce the powers of evil and to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? Will you teach her so that she may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with this child in the Christian faith, to help Ella to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by furthering Christ's mission in all of the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church so she may affirm her baptism? Congregation. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the one about to be baptized as she lives and grows in Christ? We promise our love, support, and care. Hey Jack, do you think you can help me with this? I have 
this water. And I'm hoping you can help me pour it into the dish. Big jump. Oh, you're a luck. You're a luck. <laughs> you're a little help. So you hold that with me, and we'll pour it in together. confess in the name of Jesus Christ that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in the one baptized this morning, that she may rise in Christ. All glory and honor be to you, eternal God, who was, who is, and shall always be, world without end. Amen.
She doesn't want you to stop. <laughs> this morning is such a service of celebration and worship to the grace and glory of God in our lives. And so as the ushers come to receive the offerings, I invite you to really focus on what God has done in your life that is worthy of God's praise and that brings you to a state of gratitude. That feeling where you just want to bubble over and turn to somebody and say, it is so good, because it is. Ushers, thank you.
When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of growing better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Well, you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Everybody gonna pray on the very last day. I hear that bell.
celebrating communion together. Christ's table is open to all. He asks no questions, only offers grace. So wherever you are on your journey, far be it from me to stand in your way of coming to the table. Children are welcome at the table. We simply ask that at some point, explain to your child why this is important to you and help them understand a little more of what it means to be a child of God, a wash in grace. So as we turn together in your bulletin, let's share together. Some days it seems the best we can do is to make our way to you on hands and knees, arm outstretched, praying that you will gather us in your arms longing for a touch to heal a tired soul. Other days we sprint like little children, filled with excitement, eager to receive your love. Whatever our mood, your response is the same. You desire us even more than we desire you. Even when we seem to have made a mess of things, still you are there, steadfast, ready to listen as we explain and ask your forgiveness. Lord, we ask you to listen now as we pray. Lord, forgive us as people coming to us seeking healing and hope when we turn away, brushing aside their touch. We truly desire a world filled with your love. Forgive us when we turn away from those who we see as lesser than. We long for peace, yet we inflict pain on family and friends, turning our backs on those who are most in need of your healing touch. Forgive us, O oh God, and help us to forgive ourselves when we fail to extend to others the grace which we have seeking from you. to receive morning by morning. God hears our prayers, forgives us our wrongdoings, and invites us to start afresh. This, friends, is the heart of the gospel message. With our hearts and lives, we offer grace to one who fills us with forgiveness and grace. Thanks be to God. We are all forgiven. You've heard the story many times. The, ga the disciples had gathered in the upper room. The crucifixion loomed near, but they didn't really think about that. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread from the table as they supped together. And he gave it and raised it to God, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, and shared it with the disciples, those whom he held most dear. And he said to them, This is my body, broken for you. Every time we come together to break bread, do this and remember. 
And after supper, he took the cup and again gave thanks to God and asked a blessing and shared it with the disciples, the ones he loved more than any, and said to them, this cup is with, filled with the cup of the new covenant for you and for many. Every time you share this cup together, do so and remember the grace you have received. And so again we come, as we have come for hundreds of years, that we might share at the table. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we gather here, Lord, and pour on these gifts as well, that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this juice, we may again know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Amen. Can my servers come forward, please? Because we are truly an open table, we have gluten-free wafers available if gluten is a problem. We have the goblet for intinction, but if you would rather to take the individual cup, you may serve yourself that way as well. We'll ask that you come down the center aisle, receive, and then return by the side aisles. If you need to spend time in prayer, step over to one side or the other and feel free. Table is set. Come as you are ready. Let us 
Is there anyone who has not received? Pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able and we'll sing together our closing prayer number three. Holy, holy, holy.
parlor after worship. We have come to celebrate, and celebrate we did. We didn't even need fireworks, but those are coming. <laughs> so as you go forth from this place, take the spirit of joy with you. Take the sense of awe that this holy God found this amazing way to help us connect and stay connected with God's grace and God's love in all we do. Oh, and don't be afraid to share. If something gives you the occasion, if those fireworks on Wednesday overwhelm you and you just feel like you need to say something positive to somebody, do it. Celebrate. Celebrate in Christ and celebrate God's peace, God's hope, God's love. Go in peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.